Ezekiel chapter number 32. It came to pass in the twelfth year, in the twelfth month, the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, again, dated an inspiration. Son of man, you know, if Ezekiel is lying to us, and there is a God in heaven, we've got at least, as I'm going to say, 28 chapters where it says, and the Lord came unto me, saying, if, if by chance Ezekiel is a liar, he's going to have to give an account. I don't think he's a liar. Son of man, there's that expression in the Lord Jesus Christ. Take up a lamentation for Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Well, you got lamentations of, of Jeremiah, you got lamentations of Tyrus, you got lamentations of Pharaoh, and it's whoa! Something written down, a song kind of thing, desperation. I wonder if there's somewhere written or put down Lamentations of America. King of Egypt, and say unto him, Thou art like a young lion. 1 Peter 5 8. Look at where we're running to already. We're still on Satan. We are still addressing Lucifer, Satan, the devil, the old serpent. The dragon through world leaders of the nations. So it's not just Egypt. And thou art as a whale, Isaiah 27 1, Psalms 24 14, 104 26. Do you know what whale is a type of? type of death in hell. Where did Jonah die and where did Jonah go while his body was inside a whale? Isaiah 27 1. A whale. That's one of those weird animals. He's a mammal but gives live birth He's in the ocean. Thou camest forth from thy rivers and troubleth the waters with thy feet. And what that means right there is you got this nice uh, brook, little stream, and it's clear. And you go walking through it and you muddy it up. So the waters are clean, but you made them muddy. You made them goopy. You stirred up the ground. You stirred up what the, uh, the dirt under the water. And follow, follow this, follows this, their river. Chapter 34, verse 18. So he didn't make them clean. He made them vile. Remember what Pharaoh did in Egypt to ruin the waters? He slew the Egyptian children. He himself bathed. His, his, his uh, uh, daughter bathed. And he said earlier we studied, I made the river. I believe that was in 31. You know how you soil the heavens? When you say the Big Bang, anything but God. And you know how you soil America? You say Mother Nature. Thus saith the Lord God, I will therefore spread out my net over thee. Now net is used for fishing. Have you studied Leviathan, Job 141 verse 2? Use a net for amphibians, fishies. You know what? Uh, cherubim is missing. You use a net, the Bible tells us, for birds. Over thee with a company of many people. And they shall bring thee up in my net. It's like a kind of uh, end of the world kind of harvesting. The terror. Then I will leave thee upon the land. I will cast thee forth upon the open field, and will cause all the fowls of heaven to remain upon thee. And I will fill the beast of the whole earth with him. He's going to kill him and let all everyone eat him. Body's going to lay out in the ground, no burial. I will lay. He's going to have no tomb. He's not going to be in a temple. He's not going to be in a, a pyramid. He's not going to have a birth. I mean, a place of burial. 
You won't find his mummy anywhere. I will lay thy flesh upon the mountains, and will fill the valleys with thy height. I will also water with thy blood the land wherein thou swimmest. Even to the mountain and the river shall be full of thee. When I shall put thee out, I will cover the heaven, and make the stars thereof dark. All second advent references. I will cover the sun with a cloud. That's Ra. It's a god Ra, I believe it is. And the moon, another god, I don't know what the name of the moon god is, shall not give her light. Remember the time when God judged Egypt, there was a period of complete darkness. No sun, no moon, no light. All the bright lights of heaven will I make dark over you. Don't you see that those plagues of Egypt are coming back? You think Exodus is a history book. It is a history book. 100% history, and yet it's prophetic to happen again. And set darkness upon thy land. Exodus 10.21 Saith the Lord God. Now when God says it, is it going to happen? It's going to happen. I will also vex the hearts of many people. Not just Egyptians. When I shall bring thy destruction upon the nations. Into the countries which thou hast not known. Uh oh. Can you think of any nations and countries that they don't know about at this time in the Bible is written? I can think of a whole continent that they didn't know about. Yea, I will make many people amazed at thee, and their king shall be horribly afraid for thee. When I shall banish my sword, make bright again, take it out before them. They shall tremble at every moment. Oh, you talk about anxiety. Every man for his own life. Dog eat dog, man eat dog. I don't care about my wife. I don't care about my children. Me, myself, and I. You know, that's against nature. But yet, Paul writes in one of his epistles, when he tells a man to love his wife, he's to love his wife like he loves himself. Satan even said to God about Job, uh, something about, yea, for all that a man will have, he give. And I, I can't quote the verse in chapter 2. You know, what, you know what a man will come down to do? He'll do anything for himself, even over the love of, his, of, of a love or a love of his, a mother. There is a breaking point for a mother. There is a breaking point for a husband. There is a breaking point for a person when you don't have the love of God. Because you can't know love. The Bible says God is love. And I can't say, you know, I'm going to die or be tortured for Christ and suffer under a boil. If I suffer under a boil and a toothache, I'm not very spiritual. I'm not very well-being. But if I'm in the Bible, if I'm in prayer, if I'm filled with the Spirit, being filled with the Spirit, then I can, whatever God has to give me to be done to me. And if I'm in the Spirit and, and doing what fellowship with God, then I can love my brother maybe unto death. You know why Christ went to that cross and never gave it up? Because he loves the Father. And he was sinless and he was perfect. And everything had to be done how the Father wanted to be done. And you expect an unsaved person who does not know God to go ahead and do for others. When you read stories about, you know, heroes in war and all that, there was another alternative motive there. Sometimes just quick reaction. You know, a southerner's last word is, hey, watch this! <laughs> Brandon shall so tremble at every moment, every man for his own life in the day of thy fall. They're not even going to be met. Picture, you know, Pharaoh like the secret service of the president. It's going to come down to the moment. Mr. President, you take care of yourself. I'm going to protect myself. 
Imagine a world leader with secret service or whatever bodyguards he had. All of a sudden he looks around there's no more bodyguards. You defend yourself. For thus saith the Lord God, the sword of the king of Babylon shall come upon thee. What do you think is going to happen? Guess who's going to attack Egypt? Oh, the Medes and the Persians. Nope. Babylon. By the swords of the mighty will I cause thy multitude to fall. The terrible of the nations, all of them, they shall spoil the pomp. That's, you know, great show. You ever see some of those headdresses? You ever see some of those pictures of those Egyptians dress? Just great pomp. And all the multitude thereof shall be destroyed. I will destroy also all the beasts thereof from beside the great waters. So even animals are affected by man's sin. Save the animals. Why? Your sin is destroying them. You know how many fishes are, are being killed, diseased, because you take your drugs and flush them down the toilet? You know how many birds are, are being affected because you want to drive your car to work? Neither shall the foot of man trouble them any more, nor the hoofs of beasts trouble them. Then I will make their waters deep. And cause their rivers to run like oil, saith the Lord God. Try to clean man out. Man is filthy. When I shall make the land of Egypt desolate, and the country shall be destitute of that whereof it was full. When I shall smite all of them that dwell therein, then shall they know I am the Lord. I've spoken about that over and over. This is the lamentation wherewith they shall lament her. The daughters of the nation shall lament her. And you see this in Babylon, Revelation 18. They shall lament for her, even for Egypt, for all her multitude, saith the Lord God. And it came to pass also in the twelfth year, the fifteenth day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, wail for the multitude of Egypt. And cast them down, even her, and the daughters of the famous nations. You know, nations have daughters. Cities have produced other daughters, other cities. Unto the neither parts of the earth. Uh-oh, that's not worldwide. You know, America is a daughter of England. Canada is a daughter of England. Son of man, well, and multitude of Egypt, cast them down, even her and the daughters of the famous nations, unto the neither parts of the earth, with them that go down into the pit. You ain't coming out. Whom dost thou pass in beauty? Go down. And be thou laid with the uncircumcised. Gentiles. They shall fall in the midst of them that are slain by the sword. War. She is delivered to the sword. War. Draw her and her multitudes. The strong among the mighty shall speak to him out of the midst of hell. I'm sorry. Doesn't say hell. With them that help him. So anybody that aids Pharaoh, anybody that aids the Antichrist, guess where they're going? To the grave. Nope, they're going to H-E-L-L. -L. They are gone down. You go down into hell. They lie uncircumcised, slain by the sword. Asher is there. Where? In hell. All her company... His graves are about him, all of them slain, fallen by the sword. So there's a difference between graves and hell, whose graves are set in the sides of the pit, and her company is round about her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, which causes terror in the land of the living. There is Elam, 
and all her multitude round about her grave. All them slain, fallen by the sword, which are going down uncircumcised into the neither parts of the earth, which causeth their terror in the land of living. Yet have they borne their shame with them that go down to the pit. There is a difference between the grave, hole, and hell in the pit. They have set her a bed in the midst of the slain with all her multitude. Her graves are round about him, all of them uncircumcised, slain by the sword. They're not of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're Gentiles. Though their terror was caused in the land of living, yet have they borne their shame with them that go down to the pit. He is put in the midst of them that be slain. Slain, death, war. Not good. There is Meshach, Tubal, and all her multitude. Her graves are round about him, Pharaoh. But we're looking at Satan. Do you know what Satan has all around him? He has graves. And yet the Bible says we got victory over death. We got the victory. There is no sting of death. Absent from the body and present with the Lord. That rich man, when he died, he woke up in hell. Being buried, woke up in hell. Big difference. They shall not lie with the mighty that are fallen of the uncircumcised, which are gone down to hell. Now watch this one. With their weapons of war. The Bible just said that there are warriors who have died and will die, and they carry their weapons with them. They are gone down to hell with their weapons of war. Explain it. I cannot. So when you say you can't take it with you, what's verse 27 say? Did you read about, um, oh, I can't think of his name, but where the ground opened up and swallowed all the family together, their tents, their cattle, everything? And they have laid their swords under their heads. I have no idea. But their iniquity shall be upon their bones. Oh, you got bones in hell? Go we'll read about the guy, the rich man in hell. Read what he has. Though there were a terror of the mighty in the land of the living. Here are these big, strong guys, the elite SEAL team. Oh, we're afraid of them. And they're burning in hell. God ain't afraid of them. Yea, thou shalt be broken in the midst of the uncircumcised. Uncircumcised. uncircumcised, uncircumcised yeah. And shall lie with them that are slain with the sword. War. There is Edom. That's Esau. Her king and her princes, which with their might are laid by them that were slain by the sword. You know, I keep saying slain by the sword, but slain by the sword, slain. You know what that sword is that they're slain, they're all slain by? The sword that comes out of the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ at the second advent. That's the judgment of the nations. That did not help Israel at all. They shall lie. I mean, slain by the sword. What does it say swords? If it's, if it's, I mean, we're talking about the Babylonian army, but take it pathetic, prophetically. Wouldn't it be, if you're talking about war, wouldn't it be swords? You're telling me. That Babylon has one sword. No. But Jesus Christ has one sword. They shall lie with the uncircumcised and with them that go down to the pit. There be the princes of the north and all of them and all the Zidonians which are gone down with the slain. With their terror they are ashamed of their might. They weren't so big were they? And they lie uncircumcised with them that be slain by the sword. 
and bear their shame with them that go down to the pit. Now, Pharaoh. Who have we likened Pharaoh to? We have likened him to Saint, Satan. Pharaoh, we read in this chapter, is going to die. Now, Satan doesn't die. He's just cast in the lake of fire. Pharaoh shall see them. Who? All these dead people in hell. Ready? When you got somebody who's troubled and they're in tears, they got trouble, you go around them, you put your arms around them, you give them love, and you comfort them. In their despair, you try to make them a little happy. Whatever the trouble is. Pharaoh shall see all these dead people in hell twice and shall be comforted over all his multitude. Revelation 9.15 and 19.19. You know how Satan's comforted when he sees his people burning in hell. That's what gives Satan comfort. Satan enjoys seeing your loved one burn in hell. After 2 Corinthians 4, 4, I think it is, where he's the God of this world and he blinds the people. After he blinds them, they die and go to hell. Your loved ones make Satan happy. Can I say what's on my mind and not have you really get discussed? I, can I say... Satan's a bastard. Now, I have people I don't like, but I would not want to see him burning. I wouldn't want to see anybody burn. I don't care if it's a first degree burn. That's enough pain. Never mind second and third. I don't want to see anybody in pain. But can you imagine the extreme pain of hell and here is one person saying, ha ha, I like it. And you know what this guy probably, he never even probably thanks all the people that helped him put those people in there. You think he's ever going to go up to a pope and shake his hand? You think he's ever going to go up to Joe Smith and pat him on the back and say thank you very much for the job you've done? You think he's ever going to fight, I mean, you think he's ever going to thank every Jehovah Witness that went knocking on the door with their propaganda? You think he's going to thank any religious leader, any person out of the pulpit that gave him the pulpit. As he sat, amen, in the front row of that church, preaching to the preacher, and with Jesus Christ standing at the door, you think he's going to thank them? And yet, when you do what God wants you to do, you do it to the best you're doing, yet we're all sinners. We're all going to lose crowns. We're all going to have ashes. And yet Jesus steps down off that throne and possibly puts a crown on you and says, well done. Even Pharaoh and all his own army slain by the sword pleases him. You know why he's comforted? Because he ain't going to hell by himself. Say it to the Lord God. God said that. Not Satan. God said that. God told you that the enemy of the Christian enjoys people in hell. He is happy that that rich man's in hell. He is happy that that unrepentant thief never got right. You know who else who did not get comforted when, when Jesus did right with the people? The Pharisees and Sadducees. Oh, they got upset all the time when Jesus did right. For I have caused my terror in the land of the living 
and shall be laid in the midst of the uncircumcised with them that are slain with the sword. All right. There's the many in the broad way. Here's Satan. Even Pharaoh and all his multitude, the fallen angels. There is humans, there is Satan, and there is his angels in hell. And who says it? Saith the Lord God. And we close the lamentations. We close the directions to the nations. We close our study with Satan and his people and his heavenly followers in hell with him, please. And we'll pick up on how you're supposed to be in the captivity. That's it. We're done with the, we're done with the judgment of the nation. We're, we're, and we have seen Satan through all of them. And with all that, oh, the President Obama's the Antichrist, blah, blah, blah. I don't care if he's the Antichrist. I have a God that has victory over the devil. I know Satan has people, and I'm not going to say who in government is of Satan. I'm not going to say who is not. I don't know. But I know Satan and his government will be taken down by the power and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the finished work in the grave. He is not here. He is risen. Every new president we get, I try, Lord willing, to send him a gospel track and a, and a letter about the Lord Jesus Christ. One of my prayer things in my Bible is for the president and his family. I don't care who it is. Let's study.